Hello, hello everyone. It's Tina Miller here, and I'm going to um, do a live for you today. While Anja and, and Kriya Red are off having fun with Finnebar, we're going to do our own thing here. So, let me just um, do a little bit here to get things ready while people jump on. Let me see if I can read the comments. Hey, there we go. Looks like some of you are here. Hello, Tinka. However you say that. Patricia, Sandra, you can hear me just fine. So usually... I do both. I do some canvas type art and then I also do a lot of CD art. And here's two examples of my ocean um, underwater CDs that I usually like to do. And after I had this idea for what I'm going to create today, then I remembered it's very similar to what Anja created live last time, but mine is different in its own way. So this piece is going to be titled Home Where the Anchor Drops. Home is where the anchor drops. So all of us um, in our homes we come home, we park our anchor there, and that's where we do life. And right now, my husband is traveling for work, and my son is also traveling for work. But he comes home tomorrow, so I thought this would be a perfect time to do it when I'm all alone here and it's quiet. So, let's see how it goes here. Um, I did a little prep work, as you can see. Um, Karen taught me how to make this gritty sandy texture paste to make it look like it's it's gritty um, and I already did that and it's dry I mixed up some white gesso with some sand that I got from Lake Erie the other weekend when we were there and you just mix it up and put it on and it creates its own rough texture paste like this. So I did that part because it has to dry before I can do anything else. Then I added this little uh, wood piece of, of, of design here just to raise my anchor out a little bit. And I put a stone here, a flat stone, to give it some dimension. I'm going to, first of all, um, go over this with all with white gesso. I'm usually a black gesso person for some reason. But I'm going to step out of my comfort zone a little bit here. And I'm going to make this white. And then I'm going to use some homemade alcohol paints and I'll tell you all about that. So as I go over this with white gesso, I thought I would just uh, tell you a little bit about myself and how I got into doing uh, 3D mixed media art. I grew up on a dairy farm in Tennessee, little Mennonite girl, and my mother loved to do crafts and create and all that kind of fun stuff. Let me see if I can see the comments here while I'm creating. That would be fun to interact with you. Hold on. Let me figure this out. I've only ever done this once before. There we go. I think I can see it now. There we go. So, as I was saying, I grew up in Tennessee. I'm in the United States. It's where my home is, here in Ohio. But I grew up in Tennessee, and my mother was a crafter. 
she loved to make scrapbooks, she loved to sew and cook and can food and all those kinds of good fun things. But when it rained, that was our crafting day because we couldn't work in the garden or, or things like that. So we would, um, we would get out our scrapbooking supplies and start making things. And we would make scrapbooks for sick people or for encouraging mothers. My mother was always into that kind of thing, encouraging other mothers to be good mothers. And so we would make scrapbooks and we would take, we would get the outdated wallpaper books from the wallpaper store and we would cut strips out of them and flowers and cut up old cards and magazines and things like that and make pretty scrapbooks for other people and we'd give them away. It was a fun thing that we did back before we had internet. My mother would have loved to um, be on groups like this and learn and get ideas from online, but she didn't have the computer. She just had an old typewriter that she would type up her poems and, and words of encouragement on and cut them out and glue them on pages. And so this is how I grew up, you know, making stuff. I, I did custom sewing for years and I would look at something at the store and think, well, I can make that. Can you all still hear me just fine? I'm just double checking. Everyone's still there? And I would, I would go home when I would see something and I would create it and make it myself. And uh, that's how I did for years. I loved sewing. But I got more out of that and started looking at crafts, this kind of crafts. So my mother would make mottos with glass and paint with acrylics and she taught me how to do that and so we did that a lot in life as uh, we were going through this was in my teen years but painting on glass was it was hard it had to be just right and so one day a couple years ago I was on Pinterest and you know there I was I was goner because on Pinterest, Marta was there, Anja was there, Karen, they were all pinning their, their creations and I found the different groups and YouTube and started watching the videos and at that time I was working full time so I wasn't able to have the time to create things like I do now and but it didn't keep me from starting saving up things um, and I decided I was gonna try to do this on the cheap where I would save things with texture and save things um, that you could use for making 3D art. I cleaned out uh, repoed storage buildings and so you know sometimes there was old screws and hooks and things like that and I had a stash I started to do um, the steampunk that I do sometimes and my husband built me a little shed out back in our backyard this was when we lived in Texas and that was my craft shed. I could go out there and start creating and leave my mess and not have any, um, having to pick anything up when I was done. I could just let it there and come back again another day. And so I, I really fell in love with doing this kind of thing. Um, and you know, I'm always learning from you gals. Um, 
I haven't done any art journaling yet. That's a new thing for me. Um, some of you keep pushing me to do it and I've started. I'll, I'll post my pictures soon, but um, I'm not finished that yet. I got distracted in needing to get this ready for you all. So, so there you go. I have my first layer. Um, for those that are just getting on, I made my own sand texture paste with white gesso and sand and um, made some sandy spots here that um, I will, when I paint it, it'll show up better. I'm going to have to dry this a little bit because I think it's going to need a second coat and then we will start um, doing our background. Sorry about all the noise, I know. I tried to see if I could block it out, but have not figured that out. I'll just dry it lightly here and then do another quick coat over it so that it for sure seals it all in. Okay, sorry about that. So I'm going to go over this again really quickly here. And while I do this, so when I would watch uh, Anja and Marta and them with their Lindy's sprays, oh, I wanted Lindy's so bad because it, it creates a beautiful, beautiful um, product when you get done. And but I didn't have the funds to uh, get me some Lindy's and so I found a video of how to use Sharpie markers like, like this. Let me see, where am I at? There we go. Sharpie markers like this and you take out the inside and you put it in a little spray bottle. And you can see I cut them to fit in there. I think that was several markers. Cut them to fit in there. And then I added alcohol to it. So I was making my own. So if there's some of you that think, well, you can't afford Lindy's, you can try this until you can. And it, yeah, it doesn't work as good, but it's still fun, you know? that's. To me, that's the fun, is finding ways that I can do it, even if I can't um, get the name brand things. So, I'm going to be telling you different things I do to um, find things cheaper, just in case it might help you in the long run. Keep your eyes open as you're out traveling around and... And, uh, and go go from there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna dry it one more time, and then we're gonna see if my homemade alcohol sprays will do any good. This is risky, you know, doing something new. Without doing it ahead of time. I think I did one a long time ago when I first started, like two and a half years ago, but I don't remember how it went. It turned out pretty, so we'll assume the same thing is going this time. So home is where your anchor drops. I'm going to do this one with dark gesso. Anyways. So, let's see, not quite dry there, got it a little thick. I'm going to do this first so it can dry. Okay, I told you how I made this with the, the permanent markers and alcohol. Just shake it up a little. 
Wow, look at that. And that will just sink into that paint and dye it. Then, for Christmas last year, my son got me this. It's Perlax pigment powders. And they come in these little, little, little um, containers and it's powdery in there. Can you see that? If I hold it up over the... And I put about a quarter teaspoon into a shaker bottle like this and I put a bead in there usually so there's something to shake it with and it leaves a lighter coat but a metallic coat behind it because it's it's the, the shiny pigments. So that one was turquoise. This one is kind of a blue. Let me just dry that a little bit and do some different shades. The alcohol evaporates and lets behind the coloring and the shiny pigments. It gives it a sheen whenever you're done. This one here is a duo color. It, um, it is blue when you put it on white and it's green when you put it on black. It's amazing stuff. But it's a little bit more, I just wanted a little bit more of the pigments there. It's a little bit more blue instead of turquoise. And so as you use your blower, it leaves designs behind as you blow it however you want to make. And then you just let it dry itself and it leaves little circle cloud designs. blue there. And this one here is, uh, it's a green gold. So I'm going to just do a little bit of it also. That's a little bit of gold behind. The green only shows up on the black. Hey, Anja, you made it to where you're going? I'm jealous of you and Karen having fun at the classes, but you know, my turn will come. There, you see how that made it look, it separates. And now when I let it dry, it kind of, um, it's gonna look like ocean. At least I hope so, you know. I'm just gonna do a little bit darker right here in this section. And then let it more pale up there. And then this will be darker yet. It goes right there. So I'm going to set this aside. And I see that I missed a little bit and that's going to bug me, hold on. Let's see if I can doctor this up or ruin it. You never know. Right here on this ledge, there's... I missed a spot of gesso. How in the world? Okay. Now, let's try spraying that again. There. You won't know the difference, will you? Or will you? And I think it needs just a little bit of gold on it yet. Let me see what I have here. Sparkle Gold it's called. This is also a pigment alcohol pigment that I made. Let me see if I can do it. And when it gets all and it's still got lots of pigment in it, I just add more alcohol. 
So these little pigment powders will go a long way because you can stretch them and keep refilling it. And this just gives it a little bit of a gold sheen over it. Okay, we're going to let that dry while we prepare our our um, anchor here. I'm going to go over it with black gesso. And get a brush. And I thought I had one. Here we go. Painted. I'm a very messy crafter. I have no idea how anyone keeps their hands clean. Like, you know, I've got gesso everywhere, and when I get do the waxes, then I've got wax everywhere. I have no idea how someone can keep their hands and their nails all pretty clean, because mine are just trashed when I get done with them. But, you know, I'm just a crafter. And so you see here on this one, I have um, the texture paste made with white gesso and sand, and that's dried already. And now I'm going to go over it with my black gesso. This one here will be dark, but then I'm going to go um, with turquoise. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use actually wax paints. I might. Or I may just do some, uh, some sprays show you what that or a combo who knows so I'm, I'm used to crafting like I have a room at my new home here in Ohio that um, it was a second living room and so I've got shelving and my table set up and so I just let my crafts here and as I'm doing my housework and helping my son with his business I just pop in and paint a little bit and glue a little bit and let it dry and then I come back again and just repeat so for me to sit down and do one from start to finish <laughs> is I'm not used to it. You got paint on your face? Yeah, me too. I don't hardly have any nice clothes anymore. I told my husband I've got to stop this. Uh, I'll put on a good clothes and I'll think I'm just going to, you know, glue one little b bit and what do you know then I've got glue everywhere on my clothes or gesso or you know paint and I've got to go shopping get some new clothes he said well you need to wear an apron so I might do that but who wants to stop and put an apron on every time they pop in to paint something <sighs> anyways that's part of being an artist I said the other day I need a uh, shirt that says I'm an artist for when I go to the post office and I've got paint all over my clothes I look everyone else there's all dressed up nice you know from office jobs and here I am got paint all over me but oh well I'm proud of what I do and I I don't mind so I'm just covering this as you can see with black Kind of keeping my. I decided to do the back too, even though you won't see it. But it'll bug me if it's not painted because it might show through. You know, I'm funny like that. And now's the the part where you've got to touch it while it's still wet. Well, I could have dry, dried it, but this is just just how it goes. I got this anchor at. Our Walmart. I don't know if you have anything similar to Walmart where you all live, but they've got anchors like this in different sizes, and that's what gave me the idea of doing Home is Where the, Your Anchor Drops. So, I thought, well, we will see what we can create. And I'm not going to be able to get it in there. This gesso, when I got it, it 
is way thicker. I have to constantly be um, diluting it. And then I've had some where it was thin and it wanted to run. So I need to find me a brand that's halfway in between. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. So let me dry this quickly. I wasn't watching to see if my Acre Red to see if I was staying in the frame, but hopefully I am. I'm going to dry this quickly here, and we're going to check on our background to see how it's coming. When I work with gesso like this, I love heating it and seeing it turn dull looking. Then you know it's dry. That's just so much fun to me for some reason. I know, it doesn't take much to make me happy. So there's a few spots there that I missed. I'm going to go over it just a little bit. You need a taxi, Anja? Wish I was there, I'd come get you. You ladies are gonna have so much fun. Okay, I'm going to let this dry just a little bit here. I keep empty lids, so it's a peanut butter lid, to lay my stuff on to raise it up a little bit. That way it's not sticking to my paper that I have down on my table. Sorry about all that noise. There we go. So let's check on our background over here. See how it's coming. Oh... Look at that. That is looking pretty good. You see how when the alcohol paints run down there, it creates, I call them water waves. Um, could be whatever you want. I think I need just a little bit more up in this corner. So the white tends to soak in more than the the black shows up quicker. I've noticed that that much. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry again. And I'm going to put it under a lamp over here. That's what I do, and it dries it faster. Need a little fan to blow on it, I guess. So, let's see. We've got this here part ready. And I think I'm going to go with, you know what? Let's try the Opal Magic turquoise satin on this. I'm going to try it on the back. Never thought about that. I could, ooh, that's going to be lovely. Look at that. But is it going to show through enough? Or do I want want this one? So I also have the metallic luster ones and they tend to be they're not as waxy, but they're a little bit brighter. I think I'm going to go with that. So, let's try it. 
and if I need to switch back I love doing the wax paints and I just put them on with my finger I know some people don't but I'm going to this one's getting hard on me I need to rehabilitate it so you see how how that, um, let's see if I can get this in, in here above the comments, um, where it was rough from the sand texture paste. It leaves it looking kind of like that. I love that. Thank you so much, Karen, for that wonderful idea. Forever grateful. I love learning stuff from you ladies. So you see the dark background let's gives it a whole nother dimension and when I put this on top of the light back the light background it's gonna be stunning Trendy side, yeah, I think I better just run it along the edges here really quick. Just to hide it a little bit. Can you all see? I'm not watching very good. To see whether I am on track here where you can see. <laughs> Anchor, yes. I put that little piece of wood there, Karen, just to raise it out for when I put my anchor on. Then... It will be um, out a little bit and I can stick things in behind it. It's just a little piece of wood. Um, our local craft store, Pat Catons, is going out of business. And I'm so upset because if I wanted a little something, you know, some glue or something, I'd just run over there quick. And But right now, everything is 60% off. And so I've been stocking up on, on things. Shh, don't tell anyone. And... What was I going to say about that? Oh, they had those little pieces of wood. And I thought, well, that would be perfect to raise my anchor up off the background. And here I am, not holding it close enough to where you can see. <laughs> As you can see, I have not done this very often before. So, there we go. And like I said, I always make a mess. Grab another towel and wipe that dry. Little rag. There we go. Needs just a little bit here. As you can see, my gesso wasn't quite dry and I got some black gesso in there. So, this one was Deco Art Metallic Luster. I used to get them at Hobby Lobby and they don't have them anymore but they tend to dry out, so I don't like them as well as uh, Finnebar's Opal Magic. This one here, we're gonna just do a little bit, and it'll give a little bit of a, a white to the sand part there. But it also turns it turquoise, but it's a little bit lighter, so. Blend it in there a little bit. Gives it just a little bit of, of uh, dimension. Different. Okay. Home is where your anchor drops. So when I start a project, I pull items to put on. And here is my... I may not use everything in there, but it's all there. And I can... Um, dig through it. These are things that would go well with my project. So there, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So let's see how our background is coming. Looking lovely, but it's going to need a little help to get done in time. 
It'll help evaporate that alcohol a little faster. Usually now is when I would spray it with a sealer after this is all dry. And I'm trying to decide if I should go ahead and do it. I usually do it outside because it is very, very strong. This is what I use and it seals it. Thank you, Karen and Anja. Um, it, it seals it. My thing is, if, if I give this away to someone or I sell it or whatever, I want it to last for a while. They've spent money on it and I want it to last for a while. And if it gets fly specks on it, um, I want them to be able to take something and wipe it off. And so I always give it a seal, a coat of sealer. And I think I'm going to just skip that for now and do it once I'm all finished. Um, I may have to tape up a few items so that it won't um, uh, cover, you know, like if I have a shiny stone or something, I don't want it to be covered with this stuff. So, my next step, and you're going to laugh at me. Anyone know what this is? It's a piece of a bag that... Your, your turkey comes in when you get a turkey from the store. I saw this and I thought, oh, that's lovely. So I washed it really good with soap and water and um, I saved it. And it's going to be a piece of netting that I'm going to add in here. Um, it goes in here. Let me push this up. I'm going to move these seashells here so you can see just a little bit better as I add items. And now I need my lid under here. There. So I'm going to put this in here. This is going to be my fish netting. I'm not going to glue it because when I glue everything else, it's going to be held down by that. Look at that. And that is just the netting that comes around a turkey when you buy a turkey at the store. Now, see what I was saying? How that will just make it pop. Push it up here just a little bit with the dark and the light and it makes it stand out. So there's another tip. Any kind of netting that you might find, even if it's off of the turkey, the Thanksgiving turkey. So I'm going to tuck this down in, but before I glue that fast, I'm going to put a gold chain on it. And um, I had a, a friend that I made from a yard sale in Texas who had bags and bags of costume jewelry. And I bought several bags from her and then she, later she messaged me and she said she never got rid of it. Would I want the rest of her costume jewelry? I said, yes ma'am, I would. And so she gave it to me for picking it up. And so I have everything divided into color. She gave me 23 bags full. So this one here is where I pulled out the turquoise pieces that I'm using in, um, there you can see it a little bit better in my art piece and I also um, looked through the bag of white for some ideas, pieces to use. And I have had so much fun using those. So look at yard sales for old jewelry, bags full of costume jewelry that they want to get rid of. And so I've got this little chain from her. 
Oh yes, onions and garlic. Yes, those those and oranges. They all come in um, a bag like that. So I'm going to glue this chain on here before we glue it down to the um, the background. I use hot glue for some of my stuff, but it tends to pop loose. The hot glue for me is is just to hold it until the rest of it gets until the rest of it um, sticks. My favorite glue I'll talk about here in just a minute. I'm going to wind this chain around my anchor here a little bit. You know, anchors always have to be chained or they will, the boat will leave. <laughs> Home is where your anchor drops. So there's that. I'm gonna wind it around a little bit and it's going to just kind of disappear down here. So I have this handy little snips and I can cut chain whatever size I need. So this is just going to be down here and it'll be covered up by some other objects that go over that. Can you see it okay? Okay. So I'm trying to think what goes next. I have these letters. I got them on clearance at that craft store. And they go, home goes right down through here. Just want to make sure. And for these, I do use the um, Opal Magic, this one. I can't wait till my husband puts better lighting here for me. And I'm just going to cover just the tops to give them a little bit of a, a turquoise look. It blends in really well. So these here are going to be drying. Let's see, I'll put them right there. Wow. This just gives them a little color so that the the black color is not so um, sharp and dark. Just subdues it a little bit. And those can dry and we'll add those in later. Uh, well, I told you I'm a messy crafter. Look at this. It's just part of life for me. So these letters are kind of a plastic wood, I think, and they take the coloring really well. It stays on, especially after I seal it. That would be just great. Okay, and one more letter here. The E for home. There we go, okay. Those are going to dry. I'm wondering, does this need a little gold touches to it? Maybe. Let's clean my fingers while I think this through. Hmm. Because I have gold objects. You know what? I can always touch that up later. Anytime. I can add a little gold before I seal it. But, so you see, you can just kind of go with it however, however you want. Um, I do think that I am ready to glue this in place and I want to talk a little bit about my favorite glue. I use the E6000 and the reason I do that is, like I said, if someone uh, goes to all the bother to get me to make something for them, I want it to last for them. And E6000, I get it at Walmart or craft stores or you can buy it on Amazon, I think. They have, it, it dries, it's an industrial strength adhesive, permanent bond. It says washer and dryer safe, and it's flexible. So it kind of gives a little if something bends. And 
uh, hello Wibke, Annette, hello everyone. This here, it holds, it just doesn't dry fast. So that's the only downside that I have. And you know what I'm going to do? This little top part of my net is irritating me. I'm just going to glue it in behind here. Oops, I've had my hot glue gun on too long. So that's going to be hidden right there. That's going to hold it. Um, yeah, if you let hot glue on too long, it turns yellow in it in its uh, thing. So what I'm going to do is I've got my E6000, but it dries slow. And so I will put E6000 on and then a dab of hot glue. And the hot glue will hold it in place while the E6000 dries. So let me see how much of it I need to have glue on. You can't see this, but I was taking the lid off with my mouth. Oh, ah. Sometimes you just need more than one hand, right? Especially when you're crafting like this. Okay, so I put a good amount of E6000 on, and then I will put a dab of hot glue, and that will hold it in place to draw until the other dries. And it takes a little bit. So... There we go. Press that down good. I think I need to turn it a little bit. And then this is just going to lay down through there and there will be other shells and things that will hold that in place there. There. So my next step is doing these. I love using these. These here are, um, I get them at Christmas time by the box. They are the icicles that you hang on your Christmas tree. And I use those to look like seaweed for underwater. I love the ornaments at Christmas time. They've got some really cool ones that work really well for something like this. So I'm going to put these, I'm just going to lay them out for a moment before I start gluing. And I'm going to put a shell over the base to kind of hide it like that. You got it? So we're going to glue these on. Let's start with this one. Like I said, these are Christmas icicle ornaments from Christmas time. And one little dab of hot glue, hold it in place, put it down there like that. Repeat for all of them. It just gives a little metallic look things. And the last one. Yeah, whoever saw gold seaweed? I did. I created it. <laughs> so there we go. And that hot glue will hold it and the E6000 will dry later. And here goes our shell. That kind of covers it up. I'm going to fill in this bottom little bit here with shell. And so just bear with me as I um, do a little placement placement pieces. Um, sometimes we have to do a little piece underneath to help hold it a little bit. And I here's a place to get really cool shells. Um, we have here in America we have Goodwill stores. They're a thrift store and people I guess used to decorate a lot with shells and then they get tired of it and it gets donated to the thrift store and you can buy a whole bag full of, of miscellaneous shells for $1.99 $2 
And so I go there and I stock up in all different sizes. Um, I'm just going to to create some some uh, and you know what let's put a little gold thing in there this here was off of a belt I also go get belts at the Goodwill for two dollars and you can use the leather or if you get metal belts they create really cool cool looks too And this one here was just a pretty stone and it took wire and just wrapped around it. It, to me, looks like something you might find in the bottom of an ocean. So we're going to put it right here like this. So right now I'm just laying things out and we will glue them on in a little bit. Who knows where I got it. It's got little seeds attached to it and I'm gonna put this right here I think on this edge if I can make it turn around yeah I think I wish you were all here creating with me that would be so fun and there's a shell you can take shells and paint them too just like that I went over it with the the um, vintage gold wax paint so we've got some gold. What else do we need, ladies? We need some white back in there to hide that little bit there. And a piece of shell. And maybe one like this. See, I've got all these little containers full of, of shells. I am going to move this over a little bit. There we go. And this was off of an earring. You can see it had a, a hook thing right there. I don't know, it just looked cool. I'm going to stick it in here. Let's see if we can hide the purple part. See? Anything can go anywhere. So I've got different colors of shells. So what do you think? Does it need a little pointy thing here somewhere? I think this needs to be held up a little bit. Propped right there, but then it's got a vacant spot down here. So we're going to put a shell underneath there. And I will start gluing all this down in just a little bit, but I've got to have an idea. So you just got to play with it a little bit. This one's going to be here. And I've got, I don't know what that was. It looks like a shell to me, but I think it was an earring at one time. And it, it has some beautiful colors that I think needs to be included here. And... You can just put whatever you want. Okay. I also have an aqua piece here that I'm just going to make like that. So I'm going to start gluing things down now. And uh, this here was also one of those jewelry pieces. Let me get it in the light so you can see. It's kind of an aqua setting. I don't know what it was. Maybe from a necklace, but I thought it looked like it belonged in an ocean. <laughs> I know, I'm crazy. If you ever see anything like this in an ocean, let me know. Okay, hold that down, and you see now how that is holding down. I think it needs a little more hot glue under there. holds down the netting in that corner. Okay, 
So we're going to try to take this off in layers and glue it like I had it. We'll see how I do. It's not easy. A little bit of hot glue, a little bit of E6000. These here are just placement to hold up the big shell. So yeah, I won't be able to move it right at first until it all dries. But once it's dry, you cannot break these shells loose. They're just, I mean, it sticks them on permanently. I've tried. Someone asked me to remove a word once and put a different word on. And you know what? I couldn't even get it to budge. So I made them a brand new one. Okay, I'm going to turn that just a little bit like that to hold in place there. And then, yeah, the E6000 is a mess, but we all have what we like and it's what works for me. So I'm going to put that piece right there. And then this one goes on top of it. This one here, I will do a little bit of hot glue. Oops, wrong corner. There we go. And I need another glue stick. So let's recreate this corner now. Are you watching? Someone tell me if I'm wrong. This looks like some kind of a lava rock. No idea where it came from. It was in with those assorted um, seashells that I got at the Goodwill. I'm going to put this one just down in there like that. That just kind of peeks through. And I love ocean ones like this. It's my favorite to do. But then I love the challenge too. So this one here, I put lots of hot glue in it because it's going to go over those. And they'll kind of run down through there and stick in a little bit better. And clean up my fingers a little bit. They're getting covered with glue. I don't think that's where I had it, but I'm going to let it there anyways. This part gets a little boring when it's just putting it all on. I can hear you. You're saying, no, no, not there. That's not where you had it. Yeah, I know. I don't remember where I had it. Isn't that pathetic? This piece goes right here. But that's the fun of it, is, is creating. I should make sure I'm doing this up here where you can see. I get preoccupied. And there we go. And then this one goes right in there. So you see, even if the shells are broken, you can make, make things out of them. You just kind of layer them so that the broken parts are hidden. Just like 
like that. And I think I had this one kind of sitting right there. That's a good one. Perfect. And this piece goes here. But I think I'm going to get a smaller shell. Not that one. And put right in there first. Like that. And then this one will rest right there. Now how did I have it? There. No? It's not right. Ah, there we go. There. Got a little glue sticking out there. So you see, this is going right here. So I just kind of fill things in, but I think I need a piece of something. I think this color would go better. Stick it in underneath that for a little bit. That completely covers it up. Well, what if, no, that's too big. Ah, uh, here we go. This one here, I think would be better. And then I'm gonna put some pointy ones in there, which I hadn't gotten those out yet. So then I have these here. And I'm going to add a few of these every once in a while. And kind of fill in spots. And I've got some beading. I look and find uh, seed beads on sale. And I stock up on those, and they fill in the corners and cracks, kind of. And we've got some little shells here. Let's stick a few of those down in there. So you see how they kind of just fill in the corners? And... That's no longer touching. Huh, what did we have in there? Gotta be able to see. I think I'm going to stick a piece of glass beading down in there. Let's see, I've got this little tweezers that I use sometimes to push things around. And it needs two down in there to fill in a little blank spot. There we go. Aha, uh -huh, this one needs 
needs some hot glue on it. Hold it there because the netting wants to push it back up. Ooh, it gets hot. There we go. That will dry and it'll be gorgeous. I also have a little piece here of, I think it's real, a little um, sand dollar. And I'm going to add it down here at the end. around that shell there. There we go. How does it look? It looks pretty good. I need to, I'll glue this on last. We're going to add in our letters now. I'm just going to put them up here. Make sure they fit. And then I have to put the H over a little bit. Can you see the home? Um, maybe I should pull this. You see how it dries slow enough. You can move things if you need to a little bit. These are not glued. H O M E. Now the H needs to stay there. So it can be red. Let's go like that. Hmm. We'll glue these in place. And sometimes if the glue oozes out, I just wipe it away. I have used letters from games like Scrabble. I have used um, letters from like newspapers where I cut out headings and stuff. So I was happy to see these at the store. There we go. We'll clean it up just a little bit. And I think we need one more. Ah, oh, this was supposed to go in there. Why didn't someone holler at me? You know what? We're going to just put it over top right there. Where your home is is where your treasure is. That's where you drop your anchor. I'm going to just put that and this is a treasure. He's found a treasure. I am going to just put that right there on top, even though I put things underneath. Isn't that funny how you, you plan something out and then you totally forget it? Well, I'm queen at that. But, here we go. Perfect. I think it was supposed to be there. I need a little shell down in here to fill that in. Aha! It slid right back in. I also have, you know what, I might like that better. Hmm. What do you think? Do you like this here or do you like this? You tell me, what do you think? Welcome, Maria. Hope you like what we're doing so far. I'm making a piece that says, home is where the anchor drops. We're gonna bling out our anchor just a little bit. Got these little shiny bits and bobs to put on. 
if anyone sees those starting to scoot, please tell me. Because I would hate for it to run away from me. And let's see. Nope, don't need that one. I think we are going to put this gold sand on our, you know what? No, we're not. We're not going to do that one. Let me finish my bling here. Yeah, I know. I, I'm never, never enough bling for me. But you can overdo it too. But I just thought these needed a little bit more going out from there. Ah, I gotta move this one back. There we go. Make sure it's straight. Perfect. And so what do you think? You go for the small piece in the bottom corner or maybe something else if you find something the first one. Yes, I think too. I like this one right here. It's a bunch of little stones all gathered together. Can you see that? Let me see. There we go. I like that one there too. And for this right here, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. It's a little piece that has um, beading and little chains hanging on it. And I'm going to just create a little space. No, I don't like the looks of that. I think it needs to be where I just want it to look like blingy seaweed right here perfect there I like that where it just kind of folds down in okay and along with that we have a sand dollar a gold sand dollar that I think needs to fit right here Let's put something in there first to build it up a little bit. Just get a little seashell, throw it down in there. That'll hold it up a little further. Oh, it's sinking out of sight. There, see how we did that? But it needs another one in behind. This is how I build layers with things. Some people, sometimes I use cardboard, other times I use, and you see, I get covered with glue. It's terrible. Okay. Gluing it on, a little bit of E6000 and a little bit of hot glue. That will hold it right there until it dries. Oh no, we haven't glued this one down. You know, it's too big. That's the deal. There. Perfect. You never know what's around the corner waiting to be put on until you find the perfect piece. Just fits right there. See? Voila. What about, though, nope, that's got a funny. I think we've got enough. Maybe one more right in here. Oh no, that's a little funny trumpet thing stick up on it. Now for my final little bit. I I thought about putting a fish here, but I thought no, that's too garish, too ugly. Up in this top corner here. I always like to have something dangling loose and I have this little pearl thing that I am going to add right here but I'm going to wait to put it on till later till after that dries and we're going to do a few seashells up this side let me scoot it over here so you can see the bottom I didn't realize it wasn't in there so we're going to do a few seashells up this bottom corner. Let me move these out of the way. 
so you can see them. Clean up my mess. And you know, what's fun about it is later as you're looking, you might see something that would look totally fill in a, a spot. And so I will sometimes do those before I finish. I am debating about some flowers. Do you think it needs flowers? Like that? Tell me what you think. Does it need flowers? Maybe with some yellow ones popping in from behind. Would you add flowers to it if you were you? This would be down underneath. Or is it too much to add flowers? Can you still hear me okay? Would you add flowers to it there if it were you? I would seal them and go with it from there. But I'm not sure about... You don't think so? Well, I debated it too. I kind of like the simple, clean look just like this. But I wasn't sure, does it need something in here? Or do we just let it with it busy down here and not up there? Well, I'm going to wait on adding these um, these seashells here because they don't quite um, hit me. I'll wait a little bit on those. I'm not sure it needs something, but I'm not sure that that's it. But I am going to add this one up here to dry. But I wanted to hold it up and just show you what it looks like. You see how the little little bling makes it stand out there, the little chain, the dark with the light. I don't care for how the H is covered with this. If I'd have I thought I had it measured to where it would be down a little bit right here, but I made a mistake. So you kind of live with it, however, the focus is on the anchor, yes, you got it. And there's the treasure. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I just remembered I forgot to glue this little piece down along here. So I better do that before I say that it's finished. It was just laying in there. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do that again. There we go. I'll, I'll, once the base is dry, I will glue the little other parts there. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Um, looks like we did go over an hour, hour and 20 minutes. I enjoyed creating this with you. And now you all go and make your own. I've given you some tips there on how to um, use Christmas ornaments, how to use uh, anything for netting, um, how to use old earrings to make um, the jewelry parts, and how to make your own alcohol sprays. The pigments will last me forever. This is just from a uh, permanent marker in alcohol. And as you can see, we created a beautiful masterpiece. Thank you all for watching.